When I arrived at Yale in 65, the black group was called the Yale Discussion Group. The whole time, I think that a lot of black students, myself included, had had the perception of somehow being, uh, I don't know, spies or being planted in a, in a strange situation. Administration didn't know what to do with them. I mean, they really didn't. Um, so. In 65, that's before there was the Black Revolution. You know, that was before black power. Political lines for blacks were pretty firmly drawn as well at the time. Um, I tend to for the, the radical side. Huey Newton was there, and when the Black Panthers saw me and I was the only black female, they made sure I sat next to Mr. Newton. Yet, but yet, deep down, we also knew that we had to be twice as good, okay, yep. to, to be able to get where we had to go. Because not only At did least. we have to excel in what it that. is that we did, but we had to be smart enough to play the game, the game, whatever the game was. Mm. He said, they're sick of us. The 60s is over, they done been through the Panthers, they got hit in this you know, ass with affirmative action, they're sick of us. They said, this is the end of the line, the jig is up. We often would uh, put the uh, seats for the black church in a circle, a big circle, and, um, and I would preach to the circle. Back in the early 70s, the house was the place to go. It was the place where you found that sanctuary, that place where you could go and be yourself. And you could say the sort of language that everybody would understand, and you didn't have to talk long. You could just say, hey. Khalid Lum. <laughs> say Khalid. Yeah, Khalid. Yeah, Khalid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Khalid. Yes, yes. Yeah. That to Sasha Sean gave to, to Tony K. Bambara, to this person. Melvin Van Peoples. Yeah, mm -hmm. Melvin Van Peoples. I... And that's because Yale was really one of the first places I felt welcome, um, that I felt accepted. My intellect mattered. Well, I came to Yale from the south side of Chicago. I did feel the sexism, okay? I mean, it wasn't just racism. Um, as a freshman, going to a place like Yale, the first year is all about breaking down who you thought you were when you got there. I, for one, I cannot imagine I can, I can that imagine four years Yale without Yale. the house. Oh, it, was, it was that place that I, that I think I went and so many other people went for all those things that family do for you. It's, it was a... A place where you could be accepted it was a place where it was a place having a place that, that operated as, as kind of a sanctuary was important. And connected it to the city, or particularly the inner city of New Haven. I mean, with the Urban Improvement Court. I think it was more passive acceptance. I mean, we were going to the house regardless of whether there was an acceptance about it or not. Not everyone, but a lot of people tended to sort of huddle together for security. Well, when I came, we were around the corner in another house, um, uh, not right on campus when I was a freshman. I uh, did a lot of growing up at Yale, but at the end of the day, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I had, a, I had four really, really good years. don't really have any regrets about having been there. For me, it ended up being a, a really good experience and an experience that was, uh, was pretty easy. But it was so much better than the house we had around the corner that everyone, I think, was very happy to have it be a place where people could come and meet and have programs and have speakers, and it became a focal point for us. Um, even much more than the house from the corner of that field. You know, Yale has other societies, secret societies, you know, very well accepted. So this was our secret society that, you know, we felt very proud of being a member of. Well, you know, originally I always wanted to go to UCLA, and I just applied to Yale for the hell of it, and I had forgotten that I applied to Yale. And I came home one day, and my acceptance letter was on, the, I got it out the mailbox, and I was just fabricasted, and then I left it on the table for my parents to come, and then my mom screamed, and they pretty much decided I was going to Yale. <laughs> I remember going to the house, for parties, and I remember that song. I'm not gonna sing because I can't sing, but I remember that song where uh, if your train gets off the tracks, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, <laughs> and then everybody gets down on the floor and then they go up. <laughs> so I remember dancing to that song at the house when I was in college, 
And then my, for my five-year reunion, they had a house party at the house for everybody, you know, all ethnicities. And I think they were still playing that song at the five-year reunion. You didn't really find a lot of blacks who were like you um, very often, and and then there was this whole you talk like a white person, and you know. But being at Yale and finally and coming to the house and meeting other blacks who were also smart, achieving, spoke like white people, but knew how to hang. I mean, that was like, oh, I can finally relax. I can finally breathe. There's always um, a place that's needed where we can go and feel comfortable and safe and be ourselves because if we look at W.E.B. Du Bois and how he talks about double consciousness and when we do present ourselves with a certain degree of double consciousness when we're out amongst the mainstream. It was, it was a great place, you know, it was like, and it wasn't just for black folk, you know, it was like white people, Latino people, Asian people, everybody, you know, anybody came there to have a good time. There were things that were going on there culturally, dance, music, art, and, and parties. You know, my best friends that I have today, I made it at the house. That's all we called it back then was the house. We had readings and they brought people in and, and of course we had our parties there. And you know, it was, it was a house. It was our house. So I came in with just a handful of transfer students that fall. And one of the first things I did was find out where the Afro-Am house was and I just went over there by myself and I remember Andriette Ward was working that day in the office and she met me and took me around, gave me the tour and we became friends after that and, and you know I, I joined the gospel choir and you know so Wednesday nights we were at the house, Saturday nights we were at the house. That was like my home base. I have no cousins, I have no aunts or uncles. And I went in there and I felt immediately at home and everyone helped me feel at home. And it was a very, you know, I felt like now I know what other people have um, in terms of an extended family. And that extended family I've had for like, I'm not gonna say exactly, but over 30 years now. So that's pretty amazing. So it really has, it is my extended family. To me, uh, the 40th anniversary means that uh, symbolically the AFAM House has made the transition from a movement to an institution. Um, you know, movements come and movements go, but the institution is there on a generational uh, basis. It could have gone out of vogue to have a place that was particularly for African Americans in a setting where we are becoming more multicultural and where we're um, inclusive in a different way than we ever were. Um, and there was an opportunity, I think, for that to go away, for there not to be that need. And I think it's important that it's becoming an institution and having a 40th anniversary because it says that uh, we still have the need to be together. Maybe for a different reason, maybe not because we're particularly always left out. I'm very excited about the 40th anniversary of the house. It was a place where I could go to be black. I also participated in BSAY and the Black Church at Yale. And even though it was a very long walk from Silliman, I always enjoyed my time at the house. The interesting thing about the house today, uh, as I go back to Yale and observe uh, the participants in each of the various rooms in the house, is that it's far more diverse today than it was in the mid-80s uh, when we were there. Uh, I think that the broader Yale community and the broader campus has recognized uh, all of the resources and the comfort that the house offers to students at Yale University.